All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Philadelphia Commission of Human Relations public session that's taking place today, Friday, September 20th, 2024. Can we start the meeting with the approval of the meeting minutes? Were there any corrections to note? All right, hearing none, um, I move that we accept the minutes and they are submitted into the record. Next case, next up, our case is recommended for closing, and I will ask for recusals after I read the cases. All right. Cases recommended for closing for the month of September 2024 are as follows. Under employment, there's Damaris Santiago, Santiago, Santiago versus s and Organic Cleaning Solutions, LLC. Mario Cruz versus Philadelphia Fight. Arthi Chandra Sikaran, sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, versus Grant Thornton LLP. Brittany Sakura Drake versus Penn Interactive. Christina Reyes versus Congreso de Latinos Unidos. Alana M. O'Reilly, PhD, versus the Institute for Cancer Center Research, doing business as Fox Chase Cancer Center, Temple University Health System, Temple University, and Jonathan Chernoff, MD, PhD. Jeffrey Blair versus First Step Staffing. Louis Lagan versus Elegant Furniture and Lighting Incorporated. Amy M. Crandall versus Northeast Community Center for Behavioral Health. Julia Christie versus Glasso, I'm sorry, Glasso Smith Klein. Randall Jots versus DoorDash Incorporated. Marcy Brown versus Pierce College. Jasmine Nelson versus the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Under public accommodations, there's Jaheed Hyman versus the Home Depot Incorporated. Lamont Twine versus 215 Get a Cab and Nurtrans LLC. Daniel Taylor versus Arby, Arby's Franklin Mills. Cybra LLC doing business as Arby, Arby's. Brandon Genesis Cordero versus CVS Pharmacy. Sharita Thorpe versus City Life Health, City Life Health, Cobbs Creek, and Cobbs Creek City Life Health. Under Ban the Box, Shannon McFarland versus Uber Technologies Incorporated, and Randall Schatz versus DoorDash Incorporated. Are there any recusals to note? Hi, Charlotte Mark. Um, just as an abundance of caution, I believe I should recuse myself from. Uh, the case against Congresso and First Step Staffing, those are both borrowers of my uh, uh, my company um, that I'm involved with decision making on. And um, and I need Still to recuse, sorry from I, I need to recuse from number six, the Temple uh, uh, Fox Chase case. Noted, and I also need to recuse from door, the DoorDash case. And just for clarity, as this is a recorded public session, I'm involved in the credit decisioning of those uh, two uh, entities. Perfect, thank you. All right, recusals have been noted. Can I have a motion to accept the cases? I see a motion made by uh, Commissioner Tibbs and I saw um, Commissioner Alpert as well. I'll take that as the second. All in favor? Thank you. Cases for the month of September have been accepted. And with that, I will turn it over to Kia Gee for our executive director's report. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Thomas. I will start um, first with our legislative update. Uh, the first update relates to bill number 240060, and that specifically increases protections for um, source of income discrimination. 
Um, that was signed by the mayor on September 4th, and it will go into effect on December 4th. Um, it expands the protections of the Fair Practices Ordinance in the following ways. First, it explicitly names um, housing choice vouchers like Section 8 as an example of, of a housing assistance program that is protected uh, from discrimination. It also specifies that it is illegal to communicate or advertise that vouchers cannot be used to rent or buy a property. Uh, it prohibits property owners from refusing or restricting availability, services, or repairs in ways that would prevent a voucher holder from accessing a housing unit. It also prohibits property owners from purposefully failing to complete necessary paperwork um, needed to process rental voucher programs um, in a timely manner and uh, provides a private right of action to um, complainants in 100 days as opposed to one year as it had previously been. The next update relates to the compliance team. Uh, first, I wanna give a kudos to the compliance team who has worked very diligently all year to ensure that we exceeded our contract um, contracted amount for the EEOC. Um, and that is not a small feat. So thank you. Yes, thank you all for your hard work. And they've done it despite any challenges that have happened with health of employees, um, personal issues, and things like that. So thank you to the team and thank you to Pam for your leadership with that. Also want to say, um, that the compliance team secured nearly $16,000 for six cases involving victims of discrimination, along with six private settlements for undisclosed dollar amounts. Yes, um, kudos for that as well. Um, in terms of community engagement, prevention and education, HR Representative Carlos Avales and Shanice Drinks conducted outreach at the Police Assisted Diversion Program in Huntington Park on September 6. Uh, Deputy Director Randy Duque attended the September meeting this week uh, for the Mayor's Commission on African and Caribbean Immigrant Affairs. Um, among the issues that were discussed were concerns from the local Haitian community regarding the ongoing spread of disinformation regarding immigrants and their behavior um, in Springfield, Ohio. Um, while there has been a lot of concern and certainly a lot of concern was shared um, to date, there have been no reports of anti-Haitian or anti-immigrant hate in Philadelphia related to, the, to that disinformation. Uh, in terms of noteworthy conflict responses, HR representatives Tierra Thompson and David Oliver conducted a mediation um, for a community conflict that was impacting relations between some community leaders. Um, and that uh, mediation took place at the request of a district uh, city council person. Uh, HR representative Boone Rat Mott assisted another uh, district council member in facilitating a meeting uh, regarding escalating tensions uh, between uh, a neighborhood group and a registered community organization. Uh, on September 10th, Deputy Director Randy Duque was on site. Uh, if you don't know what September 10th was, that was the uh, presidential debate uh, bet between uh, the candidates, uh, Kamala Harris and, the, uh, and Donald Trump. Um, so Randy was on site monitoring protest activity because there was some protest outside of the debates. Uh, although there was tension between the police and one protest group that led to a handful of arrests, there was no major incidents observed. Uh, on September 11th, uh, the mayor held a community meeting regarding the 76er um, stadium in Chinatown. And Randy uh, also attended that event um, just to observe and listen to what concerns the community had and determine if there are any supports that we need to be um, 
lending to the community impacted by that decision. Uh, other noteworthy events for this uh, reporting period, uh, on September 13th, Randy was a guest speaker at a course um, in uh, at Carnegie Mellon University at their Heinz College, and he spoke about hate and extremism in the United States and how to develop a framework for prevention. Uh, on September 16th, I was a featured guest on uh, Community Connections, a series that explores um, uh, community activities and resources available for Philadelphians. There I discussed the scope of our services and protections and specifically talked about the um, discrimination, anti-discrimination protections afforded under the Fair Practices Ordinance. Uh, upcoming events that are noteworthy. Uh, today, I will be a panelist um, at the Employment Law Seminar for the Philadelphia Bar Association's Bench Bar Conference. And I will be providing employers and counsel um, information on the laws that we enforce, uh, particularly those under the Fair Practices Ordinance, um, talking specifically about wage equity as well, which is always still a concern, um, the Crown Act, and um, we'll be touching on the, the standard for undue hardship. Uh, moving on to the next point, on September 24th, uh, Deputy Director Randy Duque will participate on a panel uh, at the 2024 Anti-Terrorism Advisory Council, and he will be discussing strengthening community law enforcement relations. relations. Uh, on September 25th, Deputy Director uh, Duque will also participate on a panel uh, for the Strong Cities uh, Symposium Global Crisis local impacts, how cities are responding to hate. On September 26th, I uh, will be honored by the Philadelphia Tribune as one of Philadelphia's most influential African-American leaders. Thank you. Um, and then on October 17th, we will be hosting our very highly anticipated Social Justice Awards Luncheon. During that luncheon, we will be honoring community leaders and activists who are taking significant uh, steps to make Philadelphia better. Um, this year's honorees include um, activists, uh, artists, um, and other community leaders who truly embody the spirit of brotherly love and sisterly affection. Um, moving on to hate and bias uh, data, that was reported to us for this month, we had 10 confirmed incidents of hate or bias. Most of those incidents centered on race or ethnicity, religion, and anti-LGBTQ uh, sentiment. Um, okay, the awards ceremony will take place at the Free Library of Philadelphia. Uh, in the, oh gosh, I'm, the name of the room, Skyline, in the Skyline room on the fourth floor <laughs> from one to three on October 17th. Uh, it is by invitation only. I should say that since it's a public uh, meeting. Okay. Um, the incidents that were reported to us, I will start with race and ethnicity. There was an anti-Black assault that uh, was reported wherein a black male was called an anti-black slur. He was also violently attacked and chased outside of a bar in Northern Liberties by four males. Um, this investigation is ongoing. Uh, we also had a um, report of a black family living in the Northeast who observed neighbors using racial slurs and exposing their genitalia uh, to uh, the complainant's security camera before shooting at it um, with a pellet or BB gun. Um, in that particular case, the offenders were arrested. We had uh, reports of a 
South Philadelphia business that was broken into and vandalized uh, with racist and threatening graffiti, anti-Black graffiti. We also uh, had a report of an, of an Asian male in South Philadelphia who was verbally harassed and threatened by an unknown male who then called him an anti-Asian slur um, before telling him to go back to his country and stabbing his tires on his car. That uh, particular investigation is still ongoing. Um, we had another report of an, a South Asian family in South Philadelphia who reported that their neighbor had been verbally harassing them outside of their home and using derogatory language about the family, um, even to police uh, who had been called to respond to the incident. Um, and then we also had another report of an Asian woman who received a call uh, from an unknown male making Asian language mocking sounds. Um, we had two incidents that were reported to us um, that reflected an anti-LGBTQ sentiment. Uh, we had a complainant a report that she was called an anti-LGBTQ slur and attacked uh, while walking with a friend in Center City. Uh, for that particular incident, the offender left the scene. However, a warrant uh, has been issued for their arrest. Uh, there was also a report of a man wearing a pride shirt. Uh, he and uh, his partner were crossing the street in South Philadelphia and were called anti-gay slurs uh, and then um, hit by bottles um, by people in a passing car. Um, this incident is still under investigation and no arrests have been made so far. Uh, we also had a uh, report of a person waiting for a bus at um, Allegheny, uh, at the Allegheny um, bus station, who was attacked by juveniles who made several anti-trans statements. Um, they refused to cope. Oh, this person refused, the complainant rather, I'm sorry, refused to continue in their cooperation with the police. And so um, they weren't able to proceed with the investigation. And then um, the last report that we received uh, was a Jewish woman who had uh, repeatedly been harassed with anti-Semitic threats by her roommate's boyfriend um, after reporting him living, I guess, illegally in their, their unit. Um, so uh, for that particular instance, um, we provided resources to, you know, um, to the woman. And for all instances where there are criminal activities uh, involved, we have connected the victims with police if they had not been uh, previously connected and also victim support resources. Um, our community relations team does a really good job at outreach to um, victims of hate and bias and also tracking along with our state and local law enforcement to make sure that there's a coordinated response when necessary. Um, to date, we've had 64 confirmed incidents of hate or bias reported to us, and uh, we continue to monitor uh, this. With that said, I will open it to any questions that anyone may have. Yeah, do we have any plans to, um... I know this is an enormous undertaking, and so I can fully understand if there are no plans to do it. But um, a couple of times uh, when Rue was the executive director, we did issue um, annual reports. And I'm wondering if there are any plans to try to do something similar. There's so much important work being done by this agency. And I'm wondering if people are, are you know, the public is is really fully aware of all of the important work that's getting done here. But also it's very educational to hear the types of uh, incidents of hate that arise. We certainly see patterns in, in what they are and we see spikes um, depending on what's happening in the news. And I think this is all very eye-opening, really, really important work. And I would love to have the 
um, broader community be more aware of that work, whether that's an annual report or something else, I don't know. But um, we, we do have a communications person now, right? So that's maybe a possibility. Yeah, so we actually have an annual report uh -huh. uh, and we distributed that back in January. Did not, did not remember that. Yes, and it's on our website as well. Um, and so it's available for the public to, to view. If they go, if they visit our website, philodaca backslash human relations. Um, we also, um, I believe we summarized our, the hate and bias data in that report, um, along with some of the other accomplishments of the agency. And then we have quarterly uh, meetings with state and local and federal mm -hmm. law enforcement partners where we review the hate and bias um, data collected with them as well. So, well, maybe the commissioners, uh, maybe we as a group can do a better job of circulating the annual report and making sure it gets out there and there's more awareness. Um, I'm just thinking that um, this agency does so much and um, I would love for there to be more uh, more knowledge of that in the in the greater public. So maybe so uh, I guess the easy way to do that is go to the website, get the annual report and circulate that in in our networks and just sort of make sure that people are are seeing it. Is there like a is there a summary or a press release? I'm thinking I could do this via LinkedIn and or something like that. I believe there is a press release that we did. Uh, back in January for this. Um, we also uh, circulated it through to the city council um, mm -hmm. so that they could share with their constituents as well um, okay. and certainly have it available for our tabling events when we're out in the community. So I think we're, you know, with, with the assistance of our public relations uh, person, we have come light years in terms of our outreach and what we're able to communicate to the public about what we would do. Yep. All right. Um, any other questions? Hearing none, I will turn it back over to our chair, Commissioner Shalimar Thomas. Thank you. And thank you to your team as always for the great work that you're doing. Um, and in the great work you're doing in getting the word out. Our next meeting will take place in October, or meetings, I should say, will take place in October. The executive session will take place um, October 11th, 2024. Public session will be held on October 18th, 2024. Readers for the month of October are Commissioners Kareem Thomas, Albert, and Tibbs. With that, can I have a motion to adjourn? Thank you, Commissioner Ricks and Commissioner Albert. All in favor? Thank you. The meeting has been adjourned. Have a great weekend. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. Bye, you all. Have a great weekend, everyone.